welcome to another episode of the so-called oreos podcast i am one of your hosts kia swin i'm amari pollard rachel fowler and i'm Janae Price. yeah thanks guys um episode <laughs> four. four episode yeah. four hey, 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 hey. Happy summer. Let's go. Four. we're in the door hey <laughs> let's go <laughs> so this week in black history um, I have a lot of, I have three little facts for you guys. Ooh, okay. I'm okay. excited. <laughs> so June 16th, uh, 1970, Kenneth A. Gilson was elected the first African-American mayor of Newark, New Jersey. Oh. I just had to shout out Newark in Jersey again. <laughs> <Our> um, <laughs> in 1976, he was also elected the first African-American president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Oh, yeah. there's a conference of mayors. I didn't even know yeah, he was I, the I first one. That was a thing, even. <laughs> he probably honestly. started it. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, yes. probably. Um, June 18th, 1862. Obviously, you guys know this is Juneteenth. Or was that June 19th? Yo, we can't. <laughs> oh, awkward. Um, Google lied to me. I'm sorry. Um, June 19th. Or, well, it says, like, slavery is abolished in the U.S. territories by Congress. June 18th. June 18th? I thought it was June 19th. But I feel like it's June 19th. It is June 19th. It's, it's, yeah. Okay. Mm. Just it's around the same time either way. <laughs> it's within the 24-hour period, so, like, you know what I'm saying. Wow. Um, and on June 20th, 1960... Harry Belafonte won an Emmy for his variety special Tonight with Harry Belafonte. I love Harry Belafonte. Yeah. I got his record. Ooh, it was the <laughs> very first Emmy awarded to an African American. Wow. So that's hot. Look at Harry. That. That's hot. He's a, he was a good looking man. Yeah. Okay. Is he he's still alive? I don't know. No, he must be at Google. Google. Either way, he had some looks. <laughs> <laughs> Amari, your turn. Okay, pop a court, pop. Pop culture corner. Hello. So <laughs> I just wanted to focus on Netflix and their releases of rom coms. I don't know if this is their most recent one, but one that came out in May called Always Be My Maybe, starring Ali Wong and Pause. Randall. He's still alive. Oh, hi, yeah, Harry. He is. <laughs> starring Ali Wong and Randall Park and Keanu Reeves, which a lot of people apparently don't know is Asian. Like, he has Asian parts. Yeah. He does. Yeah, I think, yeah, his, I does. think his mom. I uh, is, is it Japanese or is it Chinese? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, he so he's mixed and a lot, and he goes and he said he. I think he considers himself a man of like he, a person of color, which okay, okay Keanu. Keanu. Oh, okay, Keanu. Um, but yeah, I just think Netflix is doing such a good job of reintroducing people to the rom com in 2019, which includes people of color because yes, we do too find love. Yeah, and I like it because I am a rom com buff, which I think is also why I have a lot of problems with love. Uh, I, watch, <laughs> I watch too many. You have videos. unrealistic expectations. I have unrealistic expectations, and I'm really. excited excited to add some people of color to my very very big pile of rom-com dvds so i'm the opposite i do not like a rom-com wow i love rom-com. I like do you not like love I, no. <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just like you know life is just different you know experiences are different i mean it is Expect- expectations are planned disappointments that's what someone oh. said oh, okay. and that was christina Applegate. wow <laughs> Plan- okay i mean I I agree. To an extent, to an extent. Yeah, I mean, like, it definitely didn't help me, but I think, like, the problem was because I didn't have love growing up, like, from another person. I just looked to rom-coms because I'm like, oh, I just wanted to see it. You just want to, like, watch people fall in love and have their moments. I like romance more than I like rom-coms, so I, like, give it to me straight. Okay. Hard. Like Romance. dramatic, yeah. like Romeo Dramas. and Juliet. That's yeah, not those that's are my a tragedy. Shit. Pride and Prejudice. Oh, I love Pride mm. and Prejudice. The one, one with, my one with Keira Keira Knight. Knightley. I love yes. a good um, period piece. Yeah. Although the reason why people call me an Oreo period piece. period piece. Um, what's it called? Um, the, the other Jane, Boleyn girl. The other Boleyn girl. The Jane Austen one. Uh, becoming Jane. Yeah. But there's there's this also period piece called Bell. Which I can never pronounce her name. <gasps> oh, it came out a couple of years ago. The, yeah, yes. like a few years yeah. ago, and I loved it because I'm like, oh my god, a period piece with a black girl mm-hmm. who's like, oh, this is amazing. That actress, I ran into her on the street and did not no. know it was her. Yeah, I was walking I down her. the street in Brooklyn, and um, what's her name? I, it's something. It's um, something African. And it's a little bit hard yeah. to pronounce properly. I'm yeah, like, um, but I was with my sister, and she walks past my sister, and my sister's like, oh my god, she's so beautiful. And then she points her out to me, and I'm like, she looks so familiar. Then she leaves the store. And as soon as she leaves the store, you I'm find. like, she I was in oh, Beyond Go- the Lights. Go- yeah, Gugu Bathara. 
I literally have no idea. Not gonna try. She's from. She's from. Um, <laughs> what's the Beyond the Lights? No. Okay, but she's no. also from the Black Mirror. She's in that in a Netflix show yep. called Easy. Yep. Um, she was in. She was. Oh, she was in. Um, the recent one of actually with Belle and yeah, with Beauty, Beauty and, and the Beast. Beast. She played she's the feather duster. She's she's been in stuff. Yeah, I'm just she's sad. she's. I think she's one of Hollywood's go to mixed black girls. To oh, be okay. honest, she's up. She's that up and she's coming. She's up. No, but she, to, yeah, but she's like been. I think she's like one of those solid. Did she had like a Netflix movie too? Um, she like dies of cancer, but like she, her boyfriend was actually in Game of Thrones. It's like a weird yeah, intersection, but it's a good one. I forgot what movie that was called. I ran into her on the street, had no clue who she was, and then um, realized who she was, and I was like, oh my god, that's her. And then I kept on running into her in stores on this one street. We were just like going, and you didn't to go up to her and be like, I nah, loved you as Belle, because I think she realized that but I you. knew who she was, mm-hmm. and then like once we got we got to this pastry store, and mind you, I was not following her. It was just kind of like coincidentally, yeah, it was just coincidentally. <laughs> like I go to this jewelry shop. She's leaving the jewelry shop. All mm-hmm. right. I go to the next store. She's in there leaving. And then we finally run into each other at the pastry shop, looking at each other face to face. And I'm like, <laughs> like freaking out, debating whether I should go say something to her. And she puts on her sunglasses and like runs out the door. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, she didn't want to be spotted today. I have a lot of uh, famous people spotting moments, but I'm never big enough to go up to them and tell yeah. them. But it's like I have I, I lock eyes with someone else who realizes who they are. Mm-hmm. And like we have this moment of freaking out. And then we like, go about our lives. I feel I like saw, I'm never present enough. To, I feel like it's probably happening multiple times. So I'm just never, I'm just like in another world. That's a great I, thing about know. New York City is but that you, just, you really can you you can not notice. And they go about life like normal human beings. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, best celebrity run in. It was like three o'clock in the morning in the East Village. We're coming back from a club. I think I was like yeah, I was like twenty two or twenty one, and <clears> I <throat> was watching what's that? Not scandal. Um, to get, how to get away with murder at that time. Was it the black girl? No, oh, it was the the, the the tiny blonde one from Gilmore Girls, who's also in the show. She's um, Bonnie in the show. Oh, yeah. Bonnie, and she was dating the killer guy, who's the guy that always kills the stuff. I can't remember, but I know exactly. Yeah, what I saw them on the street, and I'm like, oh my fucking god, oh my god, does anyone else see this? Like they're together, like no one knows this and then a year later E! News broke the news that they were a couple and I was like I was the first one to see them together I should have I was like I should have told E! News sold it TMZ I girl I, but yeah, I was up. like I have too much respect for them and their privacy oh my god nah you need to get secure that bag um, <laughs> I, do. I ran into Zoe Kravitz and her boyfriend oh. I could see but here's here's the problem I really would have went up to them and said something but I was sweaty and when I get sweaty, I don't want to talk to anyone. I was rushing to a movie and I was waiting for the Bedford L train, right? And I walk up and I see her boyfriend first. I'm a huge fan of his. I think he's so attractive. And I see he was, him. And he I'm was like, really good in one movie I saw. Um, I saw him in Love, the Gaspar No movie. Um He's he's been in a few things, but not like a ton of stuff. Mm-hmm. He's in like a lot of more like indie kind of stuff. Yeah, indie movies. Um, and I saw him first, and I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> and then I see this very very small woman draped all over him, and I'm like, wait, is that is that is that what you're at? And I'm like, I, I walk farther past them, and I'm like, oh, I'm so sweaty. I was like trying to wipe myself clean because I was like, I don't I don't want to go up to them and be like a crazy fan in their face sweating. <laughs> That's not cute. It's not. But then the train came, and I just didn't have time to get myself together enough. And I had just got my eyebrows done, too. So my eyebrows are red. I was covered in sweat. I was like, I look too crazy. I can't say anything. Honestly, I don't know what I would do if I saw Zoe Kravitz. I might, she's very small. I might get down on one knee and propose to her, oh to my be God. honest. Like, to she's be honest. tiny. I saw them together, and I was like, who is this This fairy? Who this is fairy? That's such a good who way this, to describe this, her this size. little person. And then I was like, oh, my God. That's Zoe Kravitz. It's crazy. I love her. I always tell her that everyone thinks I look like her mom in the Cosby show when I get braids. Lisa Bonet. <laughs> okay. That's, that's such a good... That's a great compliment. That's a great compliment. That's a fantastic I've gotten, compliment. I've gotten Michelle. And originally that used to upset me sometimes. Michelle Obama. Obama? Yeah. I feel like, like everyone sometimes. says Michelle Obama. Well, yeah. Also, like, I'm like, you literally just thought of the first dark-skinned prominent yeah, woman that came I to your mind. It. Like, I've also gotten Gabrielle Union. I'm like, what? I look like no one. Just say <laughs> I don't look like anyone. You don't have to look like anyone. Like, right. just shut up. Right. I get Queen Latifah all the time. Um, I hate it. Really? I get Denise Axwell and Tessa Thompson. The two. Tessa Thompson's a good one. Yeah, that's the two I get all that's the time. That's a better one. 
You get Who, one? No one. No one? That's okay. That's yeah, great. Right. I feel like I'd rather just, like, get, like, just don't try. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, think people just do. try to, like, make conversation or something. Like, you know who you look like? I I'm like, But mm-hmm. my thing is, once you ask someone, you know who you look like, that just has, like, so much room to go left. It like, really does. Just don't even. I got Beyonce one time. That was great. <laughs> you guys can just nod, okay? It was a drunk white guy. He told me I look like. I'm Beyonce. sorry, you're beautiful, but like you are, Beyonce but, um, is not. That's not who you look. I look nothing. Alike, I don't think you. Okay I can that. honestly cannot look at any of us and say like we're definitely sure we look like a certain celebrity. I, I can't. Yeah, I just don't. I also got one girl from Orange Is a New Black. That was really offensive. Damn, uh, no one has said anything offensive to me. Thank God, because I. Yeah, I just shut up if it's offensive. Time. Right. I get bad ones all the time. It's just because I'm chunky and large. You should be like, you know who you look like? Kodak Black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just say some wild stuff. But I only get those comparisons from white people. Okay, I've well, never gotten those comparisons yeah, with people. Be like, you know who you remind me of? Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> Spout out a random white person. Right. <laughs> um, okay, this episode. <laughs> I mean, it kind of goes into what we're talking it about really today. Is. It's like, you're, you're pretty, pretty for a black girl. Yeah. <laughs> The one phrase Sorry. you just never, you never want to hear. I'm so, I've gotten that so many times in so many different shapes and forms. And I've even gotten it from black people. Story yeah. I was just telling you guys is that, you know, I was just in downtown Brooklyn having a little shopping day. <laughs> I got myself a smoothie. I was just, you know, living my best life. And this guy, he comes up to me and he's like, oh, you're so beautiful. You're so, your skin's so light. You got freckles. You're so pretty, all this other stuff. And I just straight up asked him, I was like, why is the first thing you mentioned my skin tone? I'm a black woman. That's it. And he was like, I I didn't mean to offend you. I just want to let you know your skin's so beautiful, blah, blah, blah. And I just like told him, when you hit on a black girl, a black woman, don't bring up skin tone. Mm -hmm. This is a black man I was talking to. Mm -hmm. I was like, my skin tone has nothing to do with this conversation. So there's no point in bringing it up. And I get that physically, that's the first thing you see, right? My skin. It's one of the first things you see when you see someone. But I don't feel like that is a valid thing to bring up. It's not. If you want to talk to me, just say, hi, how are you? How's your day going? It's the same we just talked about the last episode with interracial dating. Like, if you are trying to hit on me, my race and my, like, whatever doesn't need to be, like, brought into it Mm -hmm. and definitely skin tone doesn't but that's i've had most of that interactions also in brooklyn with other black men too who Mm -hmm. are like oh white skin shoddy whatever like whatever that's i get it with black men Mm -hmm. it's that's a big thing i'm called a red bone Mm -hmm. all the time constantly i remember when we went to this is like almost exactly a year ago we went to that um, fun with friends event oh, on the party? Memorial Day weekend. Mm-hmm. It's me and my friend Thea. Yeah. And we all like very, have the very same like we look very similar. Yeah, we all, all have the same we skin all have tone. The same skin yeah. Tone. yeah, and the guy was just like, "Do you remember this? We were in the park, and the guy was just like, on he was like walking a cane, and he was just like, hey." Y'all, y'all Dominican babies or something like that. Yeah. Remember? Oh yeah. And we were just like, no, we're, like, we're no. black. And then he was just, he just kept going. He's like, speak some Spanish for me. Yeah. Like, it was, it was. And really he was like asking up. us, like, you're Dominican, you're Dominican. He was we like, he, like, he kept nah, going, bro. and I was just like, bro, shut up. Yeah. Like, obviously we're not. And we were like, we're black just like you. Like that's what we yeah. said. Yeah. <laughs> and he just kept going. He was like, y'all must know some Spanish or something. Yeah. Like. Y'all pretty Dominican babies or something. Else. Yeah. And we were just like, bruh, shut up. It was like, just, dude, just let it end. That's not a compliment. Not. Like, so, it's like when I tell people I'm Haitian American, they're like, oh, just, just Haitian American? Like, yeah, that's it. Like, nothing else. Like, yeah, because my skin is light and my hair is like curly or I have nice hair, like, they just expect me to be mixed with something else. And like in high school, people thought I was either. Um, Dominican or Puerto Rican. I got Guyanese. I'm like, nope, nope. But nope. Dominican is very similar to Haitian. Mm. All right, wait, is it on, like, on the same island? Right, island. they're yeah. on the same island. I mean, like, at the end of the day, we're all, like, a little mixed with something. Of course. But, yeah. like, and also, like, I think, you know, <laughs> white people don't realize it, too. Y'all, some of y'all mixed, too. Because I see some Italian people, and I'm like, with that hair. <laughs> and that knows, you know down the line. It's you're, someone, you're black, you got some yeah. black in you. <laughs> like, I look, um... Uh, also, Alessia Cara, like the singer, I is love her. Italian. But every time I look at her face, she looks black. I'm like, so she, the, her family has something. Y'all, There's the Moors took over Italy for right. hundreds of years. Exactly. I'm just gonna leave that there. So I'm just saying. I mean, I've never really. I'm trying to think. I like. I love how you guys are like. 
if you're starting a compliment with my skin tone, like this is not going to go well. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm kind of almost the opposite depending on who it's coming from. So if it's like a black man, it's like, oh, I just love your skin. I'm like, yeah. Thank you. Because like that's not something I'm used to people yeah. saying that like like because I'm dark. Darker skin, it's it's you're never like it's not like a fetish kind yeah. of. It's not right. like it's just like I'm not a positive. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so like when, when you someone, say it, it's a compliment. Right. But for light skin, it's like I'm literally only talking to you because you have light skin. Right. Because exactly. you're a trophy to me. Yeah. Because right. you're closer to white. Mm -hmm. Right. Literally, it grinds my gears when a guy, especially a black man, starts off the conversation talking about my skin tone. Yeah. To me, that tells me that you do not know enough about our history. Number one. And number two, for some odd reason, you think that this is going to make me like you. Yeah. And another, it makes me wonder, like, one, you would not talk to me if I was darker skinned. Yeah. Two, I feel like you're the type of guy that treats darker skinned women terribly. And I don't like that. And I don't like that. I and I think they think, I think people think light skinned people, th like, are if, like. If you put us on a pedestal, pedestal we'll, we'll like love you more it, because no. light skinned people are just full of themselves. But you know what's the hell? It's usually the darker, like, guys, guys. darker skin tones are the ones saying, and your light skin. Yeah, and it is. Mom. Yeah, it's usually them. I'm like, but what if we do get together and we have a child and her skin tone is the same as yours? Mm -hmm. Like, how are you going to treat her? And how, how, how are you going to make her feel beautiful in, in her skin? I, I think that's interesting, too, because, I mean, my dad's not like that, but my mom is lighter and, like, I'm very much so my dad's skin color. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I never got your pretty... For a black girl, I just like told you guys earlier, like I just never got your pretty really. It was like um because you are beautiful. Thank yes, you. Are. I mean, there, I was ugly for a certain for for a good. <laughs> it wasn't everyone. But everyone, yeah, everyone. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, true. Um, but it it was like as I got older, it usually just came from like girls. So then I was like, oh, I'm just like I'm girls trying to be pretty, mm -hmm. and then I just became like, I'm not. Then I then I used to tell people it's like I'm not really pretty when you first see me like it's not something that's obvious it's like once you get to know me I get prettier and like that's how it goes uh, which is like kind of sad because wait why do you feel that way I mean that's what I used to like I think I used to say like that's I I because no I think because no one was approaching me so I was just like okay I'm not I'm not an obvious pretty person not like you're gonna walk into a club and like notice me the first thing which is also a lie because plenty of men Ooh. men have picked my out <laughs> of the crowd wait us. yeah when we were at that event together mm -hmm. but yeah that, what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but i mean i think like as i've gotten older and kind of like been able to look at myself and be like oh yeah like you are like you are you are fucking pretty amari um but like when you're young and no one's really it's a personal you, journey wait, it's like a, yeah ex exactly um for sure Definitely. Yeah, I think like I got that. I was the same experience. And when I went to college, and like the first person that talked to me, I was like, "We're gonna get married." Like, it's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just so messed up. But like, yeah, pretty for a black girl. I feel like I've gotten that. I feel like maybe too many times to really remember. But I think a lot of times again with the skin tone thing, I think it's like people are like you have the perp. Like a lot of like white people that I grew up with. It's like, mm -hmm. you have the perfect skin tone. Like, you're not too dark, but you're not too white. You're naturally tan. You're naturally tan. You're the perfect skin tone. It's like, that's that's really, that doesn't make me feel well. Mm -hmm. Like, I know you're trying to be like, you have nice skin, which, like, yes, I have nice skin, but so does everyone else. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to make people feel bad for having a different skin tone. I've had, a, I've had a black girl tell me that, actually. Really? Like, yeah. She's like, you have the perfect skin. Like, you won't be jealous of your skin color because you're naturally tan. I'm just like, I don't. I didn't like the same thing. Yeah. I didn't like, um, um, to like that's not what I strive for, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's not like the, the number one thing on my dating profile. Mm -hmm. like, I'm really excited skin. about my light skin. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've, I've gotten it a bunch in a, a similar way where it's kind of like white women are like, your skin is, you're golden, you're tan, and black men are like, hey, light skin, red bone. I've even, I was walking down the street one day and this was in upstate new york which is surprising because i feel like i get catcalled way more mm -hmm. in new york new, new york. york city mm -hmm. than i do in syracuse but this guy yelled out he was like that's a big ass red bone and in that what? moment Bro. i had to stop and laugh because <laughs> i was like i literally just imagine a big piece of fried chicken walking down the street <laughs> that's literally what? i imagine like a big old chicken wing like kfc drumstick mm -hmm. walking down the street and i just laugh because it was kind of like that's ridiculous but it, it, i even get it from my family too people call me cake mix 
I get called Chicken McNugget. Like, I think it's often, but, you, but isn't your most of your family you said it's like they, they, they look like you, right? And see, here's the thing because <laughs> <laughs> within my family, I'm still lighter than uh, oh, oh, like they're still light, but you yeah, are light, yeah, yeah, okay, like. On my mom's side of the family, I would say, like, a lot of her sisters are lighter. And on my dad's immediate family, a lot of us are lighter, but it's still a decent mixture. But mm-hmm. compared to everyone else, I am consistently, like, one of the lightest. So I think it's, it is what it is. I think it's funny because I feel bad. Sorry. Because... <laughs> um, I think I have a good mixture of like light and dark people in my family, but like my immediate like nuclear family is pretty dark. Mm-hmm. Um, and my mom is the lightest out of all of us. And y'all be making fun. We of all her. be making fun of my Absolutely. mom, be- but she. I think we make fun of her because she swears that she is dark. And oh, I have never. No. And it's like I think culturally, never have I experienced such a person who wants to be dark. Like my mom's a person who go to the beach and put tanning oil on her skin to get darker and I think I appreciate that as a coming as a dark-skinned girl having a mom who really loved my dark skin so it was like oh that's like I never felt um I feel like my insecurities about my skin never really came from like my family or like anyone I loved it just came from the outside people I think it's also like um, a numbers game like if your mom had like kids that maybe like was her skin oh yeah uh, like you're a different yeah Yeah, yeah, so I was like oh that sounds similar because everyone's like I'm like, I'm just as dark as Wild Blood. Everyone's looking at me like, Kia. Right. <laughs> yeah, and she's, and she's lighter, and she's lighter in, like, her her family. She's one of the lighter ones. And, and but she, again, she's like, I'm dark. I'm yeah. dark. But, and then I think also it comes to because, um, so, like, you grow up with a light-skinned mom. She tells me my light skin is beautiful. But then I look, and my dad's dark, and he fell in love with a light-skinned girl. And then I look mm. at all these other black men who usually tend to go for lighter-skinned women. And then sometimes... Oh, yeah so then I, I think about that too and then I feel bad because it's it's like a weird relationship where I sometimes get angry at her for no reason yeah. but it has nothing to do with her it's just the way society has viewed like skin women I think also my mom is ridiculously gorgeous and she was a beauty queen and I think that's just a lot to handle uh, being an uh, ugly, <laughs> ugly dark skinned girl in upstate New York and having this like beautiful mom and then I also notice it too when I date people who I historically date men who are lighter than me and I'm like wow this is some internalized um like hatred towards myself and like dark skin so it's like all this shit happening as as a light-skinned woman it's definitely something that i wouldn't necessarily say as dramatic as i've struggled with it but it's definitely something that i've noticed and i think that's why when we were talking about it earlier like when a man approaches me and brings up my skin tone i'm automatically like no Mm -hmm. because as a light-skinned woman a lot of times you're not taken seriously Mm -hmm. people often often think that you're vapid and that all they need to do is compliment you and you, you're uppity. You think you're better than everyone else. So if they compliment you, they'll be cool with you. And oftentimes I'm like, like my sister, for example, my sister's your skin tone about. Mm-hmm. And she has told me dozens of times where she's gotten, literally she's been talking to a guy, a light skinned girl who walked by and he'll just That's crazy. ignore her. But I also think, again, um, this is the man's fault. Um, I'm just, <laughs> I think a common denominator is like the, like we've talked about this before, Janae, like, how people say X, Y, and Z about light-skinned women, but it's like you feel that way because the way guys talk to you some, somehow correlates to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, like, guys saying, like, oh, you're pretty for a light-skinned girl or you're pretty for a black girl or whatever, that automatically makes you want to, like, hate on the light-skinned girl because they're saying – they're building her up, so you, like, obviously want to, like, put – stuff on her but like i know me and you like we would never say like the stuff that people would say never, like we would say women annoy me <laughs> i mean 96 yeah. percent of the time i really be thinking that i'm darker than i honestly me too. am and then someone i'll be going off, just reminds me. I'll, I'll be going off about how black men always go for the light-skinned girl like i will be going off about they always want light-skinned girl with long curly hair yeah a heart-shaped ass and then someone will be like your light skin and I'll be like <laughs> like I, I will literally forget about it because the light skin woman is the one who's literally always chosen like she's not light skin she's white but that's you not but is about, that the person's fault is that the woman's fault no, to an extent you know, that's what I'm saying you have to think about how um light skin black women are perceived in the media especially like rom-com movies the leading 
women is usually light skin. Mm -hmm. You know, so mm -hmm. we have to think about like what are these men reading? Not only in movies and television shows, but like in magazines, in billboard ads, we used to see light skin women. Right. So as a, as if like you as being a dark skin woman, if you always see that, you'll think, what's wrong with my skin? What's wrong with me? Yeah, and then it, and then it also becomes like an eternal like again like this. Um, like I have a lot of light skinned women in my mm -hmm. life and I love them. Like I love you guys. But as a whole you kind of it's it's a struggle because you just have this kind of like internalized anger towards it, not coming from anything that they've done just because what society has told you. I think you because other desired. people are feuding that. Right. Yeah. Like you're not desirable. And then sometimes even like when you look the media is getting better, but even now when I look at the leading ladies, it's all um you know, mixed girls who are lighter, yeah. like they still have, have they they like Zendaya, it Amanda, Yara, Yara. It's yeah. like y'all are all mixed with something, and you're a little bit lighter. And then like, yes, we have Lupita, and but I'm just like, where is the other line of like dark skin? Yeah, because the, the lighter girls actually aren't mixed; they're not even black. Like we just said, like Amanda, Yara. Um, no, 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 they're both mixed. Zendaya is mixed. That's and, what I'm saying. They're uh, not black. They're oh, not, well, they're, 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 they're not like, right, yeah. they're not like, uh, so it's, it's not like come up of two black parents. Yeah, it's right. definitely. And then, like, speaking of that, like, did you guys see that Gronish is doing mixed dish? Yeah. Yes, that trailer is so cute. I was like, why <laughs> mixed it? I think that's a weird name. I didn't for it. Mix, see that. mixed mixed dish think, is a, it doesn't go as well as yeah, Gronish because it's the ED at the end that makes it weird. Yeah. But also, it's a money game. Like, it they is. saw that Gronish is doing well and Black is doing I well. I just want them to do mixed dish well. I want, yeah. I want them to do What is mixed dish about? Can it's it's it? about, I think, the mom. Rainbows. Which is Tra Tracy yeah. Ellis Roche. I think it's her, like, story. Yeah, because like, um, she grew up on, like, a commune or something and then. Um, went to public school and like just dealing with like her because her dad's white and her mom is black and I, but I do like the two actors that they chose to be her parents mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping that they do it well um, I just I need them to execute that well right because I think it makes people have like a unique story and oh, like a unique them. identity which we'll go into another episode but I want them to like execute that well no for sure if they're gonna do it mm -hmm. but but yeah pretty pro black yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know like, what does that even mean? I think it's just, like, mean? people, again, with a lot of the topics that we talk about, people just need to realize what they're saying when they say it mm -hmm. and how that affects people who are receiving these comments. I think people need to realize that you can't just itemize people. You can't just look at someone and dice them down to their physicality. Mm -hmm. You need to consider the entire person and maybe think, is what I'm saying going to just strip someone down to their their physicality mm -hmm. like if i'm commenting on your skin tone is that just making you about your skin tone mm -hmm. you know yes remember that people don't always think that way yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure yeah. 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 i think it's like a lot of people lack empathy which is like the number one thing i think like people are mostly selfish and lack empathy mm -hmm. in my opinion so i think it's just like for me it's like i think it's outlandish when people say this it's like i would never say that to someone mm -hmm. or i would never like disrespect someone like that but it's like again i have to remember like okay he and not everyone thinks like you yeah. mm -hmm. unfortunately but like <laughs> <laughs> that's like i have to remind myself not everyone thinks, thinks like, like you me. yeah but like i know even if I, I i'm out on the street and i see a man with like beautiful clear chocolate skin I won't, I'll say it to myself, like, mm -hmm. oh my god, it's really true. But I won't say it to him. Yeah. Because I know how that feels. And I, yeah, and I never really, like, when I see someone's attractive, I, I just never, it's just like, they're attractive. Like, it's never yeah. like, they're attractive for a white person, or they're attractive for, like, an Arab guy, or whatever. Like, I just see you, and I think you are a person, and you're, like, attractive, and you bring these qualities, and I get to, like hear from your perspective but i don't know maybe it's because i've just gone through stuff like that that's just like i i would never be like you're a, i like you because you're light skin i also hear a lot of women like sit like a lot of especially black women say like oh a light skin guy which i'm just like that sounds oh, wrong to me oh my god can we dive into this that sounds wrong to me. Like, i remember i was in bible camp all right a few years ago and somehow we got into this conversation, some girls saying that they prefer to date light-skinned men and other girls saying that they prefer to date dark-skinned men. And they were saying light-skinned men are, you know, full of themselves and they're pretty boys, but they're like really affectionate and dark-skinned men are hard and they're tough and they're just more manly but that's also the, that's, that's, not, that's not true but that's also kind of the same shit that they talk about vice with girls that yeah, the light-skinned yeah. women they're softer mm -hmm. they're more feminine 
they're um, easier to get along with. Dark skin mm-hmm. girls, y'all are hard and angry. difficult and angry and just like abrasive. Yeah. So it's like kind of like it's kind of like the same thing. It shocked me though because it was like this is a group that shocked of me too. Black girls talking about this. And they were, we were teenagers Mm -hmm. and they're like just going on and on and on about this stuff. And I was so confused because I was like, in the first place, when I see an attractive black man, his skin tone isn't a factor. That's what I'm saying. It's It's not a a factor. It's not a thought and it's not a factor, but I wonder like, like, mainly because I've dealt with mostly black men, sometimes I'll look at my history and I'm like, oh, they're all light-skinned, they're all light-skinned black men. And that's something I think of afterwards. And I'm just like, that just so happens to be, mine is all dark skin. The path, right. But it's like, I'm not consciously, I mean, my sister will probably say, like, I went to a party the other day and I picked up this guy and said he was hot. She's like, of course you picked up the first light-skinned boy you saw. And I was just like, it's not like I purposely do it, you just was cute. But again, it's like something that you think about. Like, am I internally warding off dark-skinned men? And also I want to know, like, from the stereotypes from um, the camp we were talking about, mm-hmm. have any of those girls really experienced that or are they just saying so? Yeah. Like, have have they really experienced, like, a bunch of light-skinned dudes and a bunch of dark-skinned dudes, and that's the stereotype. Where's your information Where's from Where's Sweden? the facts? Have you been out in the field? <laughs> <laughs> been I know. Walking? What oh, I said to them was, I was like, you guys know that that line of thought comes from slavery. Yeah. You know that masters were literally trained to pit colors against each other, like to pit light skin against dark skin, mm-hmm. so we would never come together and overthrow them. Mm-hmm. That same thinking is what you're spouting right now. And I was like, just point blank, period. You should never be looking at someone of your own race and say they're attractive because they're this or they're unattractive because of this when it comes to skin tone. That don't make no sense. We all come from the same damn continent. Mm -hmm. Actually, we all do because life was started in Africa. But besides that, I'm just going to leave that one over there. (laughs) But besides that, it's like, how could you just dice it down to light skin or dark skin? Like, yeah. if a person's attractive, they're attractive. And but story. we all, I mean, the culture really does cling on to this whole light versus dark. Yeah, like, sad. this is that. I love my favorite is the, uh, oh, he got that light skin boy look on his face. Mm-hmm. Um, which, I'm not going to lie, I actually do think it's a, it's a, it's a fucking look. There are, there are <laughs> it's a lot a look. of you, like, you, you push your lip a little bit and then your eyes, it's like they're smizing. Mm-hmm. But, like, for, like, a I've guy. i dark skin people do it, too. I don't even I know, know what we're talking about. about. I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah. all, all, always in the clouds. Like, <laughs> Remember, like, you, like, you can't see it, but I'm doing it now. <laughs> this is nice. This is nice. Oh, like a, a deep look. conversation about this. I remember <laughs> when uh, Crystal from the Reed podcast Kodak Black. Kodak Black, like a burnt cockroach or something mm, like that. And then people were coming at her. And you and I had a conversation about basically colorism and how I, and I started thinking, are there any negative things that people say about light skin people? When it comes to like, skin tone. When it comes to skin no. tone. Like, really, are there any? And we came up with the answer was no. You no. say, like, act in light skin, but... It's not like, oh, you look like a... A burnt piece of toast. To- or, like, you look like a undercooked chicken wing. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I would mean, I be mad if someone said that though? I, I would just so. look at him like no. that's why you could come up compared to yeah. being, like being compared to a burnt cockroach. Like I mean, or like people call people will call you fucking midnight. Like y'all or coming at the night can't night? see you. Like, that's Mario, mean. Mario, yeah. all I can see are your teeth. Where'd you that's go? Mean. Where'd you go? I can't see you. Yeah. Like I'm fucking dark. I ain't. I'm <laughs> like what the fuck. I think it's just internal because I hear that a lot from like black people too. And I'm just like yeah, yeah. 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 So well, black people say that stuff all the time. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, we could go to a whole other uh, episode about colorism. Yeah. But um, right. yeah, pretty for, basically just don't say it. Don't say you're pretty for black no, girls. Say <laughs> just, just say you're pretty. pretty. Just that's say it. you're pretty. pretty. Just yeah. say you're pretty. It's not that hard. I just, just gotta compare. Walk up to someone and say, oh my God, you're so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Was that so hard? Oh, can no. I, like, oh my God, my favorite thing was uh, in college, I was at like a party as like my sophomore year. I was just sitting on the wall, just standing there. And this cute guy comes up to me and he's like, I just want to tell you before this. Aww. I just want to tell you Can we go this. through really quickly all of the really positive times we've been hit on? Right. Just real quick. Wait, well, yeah, I don't know. But, <laughs> but the best part about that interaction was that he just said that and fucking walked oh, away. That's I great. was like, I had a thing. And I never saw him again until my senior year. I was mm-hmm. like, what the fuck? Damn, I don't even remember the positive. I'm, I'm going to tell mine. Okay, you tell yours. Okay. 
<laughs> I was um, at this club uh, for like a, for a friend's birthday party and I'd gotten in there like it was one of those nights where I was not expecting anything. I had no expectations on how fun this would be. That's about time. I That's had nice. no expectations on meeting guys. I was just there. I was feeling myself. I was looking cute. I was like, whatever. So I go in. I like to do like a little lap around the party, see what's going on and uh, go to the bathroom. So I'm walking to the bathroom and a guy steps in front of me and he basically asks me where I'm going. And I look at him with mad attitude, like to the bathroom, duh. <laughs> Cause like I was standing right in front of the bathroom and he steps in front of me like, where are you going? Right? So I go in the bathroom, do my thing, come out. He's standing right there. Now at this point I actually look at him. Mm -hmm. He is this six foot seven. Yep. Just her size. <laughs> yeah, like like bigger, like he's muscular guy. He's wearing a suit. And I'm like, oh, oh, hi. So he asks me, he's like, like, why are you here? And I'm like, oh, I'm here for a friend's birthday, whatever. And he tells me, like, I work here and all that stuff. We we're like chatting. And he just like stops us mid chat. And he's like, I have to tell you, I saw you from the moment you walked in and you were the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Aww. And I knew I had to come talk to That's you. Precious. And I was like, oh. like you I literally, yeah. Night? I what? was like, oh my God. Like that literally has never, ever happened to me. I was taken aback. I was happy for the rest of the Aww. night. Like it just takes one good, it, one good interaction. It just takes one good interaction. And I wish I had more like that. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, I've definitely had more of the negative reactions, <laughs> but but I've had some stuff like that. So I don't remember like specifically like what is a good one. I think because honestly, there's so many like once I just hear something about my skin tone or my hair, I'm just like, okay, well, I'm gonna <laughs> work this out. Done. Yeah, but yeah, there's definitely been some good interactions Wait, for sure. Age? The one that I can remember actually happened at Hofstra. Um, it was a beautiful day. I was sitting outside in the quad near Starbucks, mm -hmm. and I was like doing homework or something. And um, this the Asian student walked towards me. Um, I looked up, paid no mind, because he walked, as I looked up, he was walking towards me. And I just looked back down, continued doing my work. And then he said, excuse me. And he was just like, hi, I thought he wanted directions or something. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, oh, I just want to say that you're very beautiful. Your hair is beautiful. Um, you look very nice. And I said, oh, thank you. And then he just walked away. Like, That's you know, so like nice. nothing. The best is when, like, they don't expect anything no. out of that conversation to come. They just yeah. want to let you know that they think you're yeah. beautiful. It's not like catcalling. Like, yeah. like, catcalling is just disgusting and it never works. It yeah. never yeah. works. Who raised you? Sorry. It's all another <laughs> no. question. This um. guy um, from my situation, he wanted more. We're not going to go into that. Oh, oh, you went he, on, <laughs> did you tell me? Yeah. Okay. Should I just tell the story? I. Anyone? You have to know. Right. right. You can't be that person who, like, starts uh, it and, like, let me bring this back. Right. This back. <laughs> well, he, after that, he was basically like, when are we going to get food together? Because he was talking about how he's African. His, like, aunt owns a restaurant in Harlem. And he's like, when are we going to get African food together? And I was like, bitch, any day this week. I'm open. <laughs> I can make free time. So we decided on a date. We exchanged numbers for the rest of the night because he was working at the club. He'd like come up to me and dance with me, then go back to work. I was feeling like the bell of the damn ball, bitches. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, oh my God. So after that, I think we met on Saturday. We ended up going to dinner on Monday. Um, we went on the date together. I saw him in person and I kind of realized maybe I'm not as attracted to him as I thought I was when I saw him dressed up in a suit and he was like, just down. We went on the date, you know, he kind of went from being a gentleman to getting kind of sexual. Um, I drove from Brooklyn to Harlem. So he walked me to my car. We were sitting there. He kind of starts telling me about his life and his story and basically starts pushing the idea of us being in a relationship and getting married eventually. And it's like, bro, I just met you on Saturday. Mm -hmm. It's Monday. I don't know you. He just came on too fast and too quick. Mm -hmm. And I kind of got creeped out and then ached him for the rest well, of the Well, let's time. just focus on the positive. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it started off well. It started off well. Yeah. Really did. Um, okay, unfortunately, we ran out of time. But uh, thanks for listening again. Um, <laughs> if you have questions or comments, you can sign to our DMs or email us at so called Oreos at gmail.com. Sponsor us so we can 
quit our jobs and live this life. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, honestly. DM please. us. Please, please, please. Yeah. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>